This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 46 of the Wisdom by Elisa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sophia Gunna. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WISA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia, so today is a special day. Tell us about it. Yes, it is. And I'm so excited. So today marks the two-year anniversary of Wisdom by Wessa. So, of course, I want to thank you and Mike for being fabulous co-hosts. And, of course, the Horse Ready Network as well for producing the podcast. And I can't believe it's been two years already, but it's been such a blessing to work with you guys. And, yeah, I'm super excited just to continue. Yeah, it's thank you. Very thank funny. you so much. Yes, and it does <laughs> not seem like two years. And so I think that that means we're doing something awesome because if time's flying, that means we're having fun. So, yes, and it's been so great to interview all these great WESA members to yes. be here with just to get to know them more. Yes, so enlightening. It's really, really been, um, I know Mike agrees, it's really been a joy. So as we have been talking and you've been giving a virtual tour of the 14th floor of the DMC, uh, we've also heard that AETA will be joining WESA at the DMC. Can you share more? Yes. So as we have shared on Wisdom by WESA, WESA is relocating to the DMC. And now ADA, the American Equestrian Trade Association, will do the same, which means we'll be neighbors at our new home. So both of the shows will run at the same time. So that's January 14th through the 17th, 2021. And um, that means that WESA members now have the opportunity to showcase their products to both ADA and WESA buyers and WESA retailers can in turn write orders at both of the shows. Where can both WESA and ADA buyers find today's guest? So from our last guest, American Hat Co., they can just walk down the hallway south and they'll get to room 14785. And on the way, they'll find WESA members such as Wrangler, Transitions, and Cactus. Well, and let's find out a little bit about today's guest, and we'll have Mike introduce her and uh, get right to her interview. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, more than two decades ago, a gentleman by the name of Wilson King, a young Pennsylvania man with wanderlust, found himself in Australia where he acquired his first oil cloth duster. When he returned to the United States, he found the duster kept him dry when riding and warm, and that was the birth of a successful company selling oil cloth closing, Outback Trading Company. And today, his daughter, Alexandra, the company's marketing director, joins us to round out that story. Allie, thanks so much for joining us here on Wisdom by Oisa. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. I mean, the story of the company is really kind of interesting. I guess in a way, anybody wearing an oil cloth uh, uh, fabric from you has some sailors to thank from many, yeah. many decades ago. But I think that's, a, that, that's an interesting little tidbit as to how we got to where you are today. Uh, quickly go through that the, the sailor story to your dad, his wanderlust in visiting Australia, to the successful company you have today. Yeah, so it's an interesting story. First off, I am um, the daughter of the founder, Wilson King. And um, Wilson went to Australia when he just graduated from college to spend a year on a station. And while he was on that station working, and the station's a property in Australia that's a large ranch. But while he was working there, he was introduced to oilskin fabric for the first time. And oilskin fabric is traditionally from sales. They treated sails, canvas sails, with a mix of oils and minerals to treat them so they were strong enough for boats to sail during the time of exploration. And a lot of times when the ships would get to their destination, the sails would be ruined in ways that they couldn't be used as sails anymore, but they were cut up and used for jackets and early raincoats. So in the early days of Australia, 
that's how oil skin began. Um, and then, so then you're, so, so your dad is in ahead. Australia, he has one and he returns to the United States and what happens then? So he returns to the United States. He lives on the East coast and he went for a range or, or a ride during the rain and was just really impressed with how well the coat held up and kept him dry. And he just felt there was a market for it and a future for oil skin in America. And so he began importing um, Australian oil skin coats to start with. And then later he progressed to making his own and thus began Outback in 1983. Okay. And for those who think they probably know, uh, but may not exactly what <laughs> is an oil cloth fabric. So oil skin fabric is, it's a cotton fabric that's treated with oils and minerals that give it a waterproof coating. And it's treated before the fabric's cut to make the garment. And it is, as I just mentioned, a very old fabric and an old form of rain jacket. But it can be treated once a year with reproofing cream. And oilskin jackets last for, you know, 20, 30 years. They're really a great investment if you need a rain jacket. Well, and now, of course, you've expanded the line from just uh, uh, dusters and jackets. And the company has grown to become a major player in the Western fashion, Western style world. Chat a bit about now about your distribution system and how people can either work with you to be able to market your product or people who want to buy one. Sure. So yeah, as you mentioned, we started with that one jacket. Now we have a full range of outerwear for any need from vests to dusters to jackets to fashionable pieces. And so we also have a fall fashion line, which is our really fun collection. It's like much bolder and brighter pieces. But yes, we either sell to different stores. We work with a lot of the larger Western chains, such as Boot Barn and Cavenders and Murdoch's and Cal Ranch. And then we also have our own website. So folks can buy directly from us or go into one of our many, many stores and try things on before you purchase. Now, that new fashion line is something I'm sure that perks Casey's interest because she is, of the two of us, she is a little more fashionable than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Casey, pick up the story here on the on the fashion line. Yes, you? I'm scrolling through the website, and of course, the first thing I notice is just your wonderful, wonderful and attractive photography, and I know that that is a big part of your marketing, so talk a little Thank bit you. about your photography, not just sure. for your website, but also for your social media. Yes, so we are an East Coast-based company, and which is great, but a lot of our customers are in the West, and so we started a program a few years ago where we find different influencers or people who are doing different journeys and we've sent people products and in exchange, they've sent us pictures of their adventures, yeah. which has really made our, our look be a bit more authentic and really adventurous. And that's our brand yeah. where our tagline is outfitting life's adventures. So yes. there's people out there adventuring. Well, and when I see the pictures, you know, it made it, like you said, it, it kind of puts you in the picture and wh where you could go and what you could be doing wearing these products. And I'm scrolling oh, through great. your spring 2020 collection. I'm looking at a vest called your women's Santa Fe vest. It's beautiful. And again, I'm oh, just quickly you. strolling through, you know, and I feel like I do this almost every interview. I, I, I come out of these interviews with lots of shopping to do, but <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless, the designs are beautiful. The designs are bold. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, and this is just one sector that I'm looking at, but I, I'd love to know where the inspiration comes from your designs. And I'm sure that is a very broad question, but just a little insight into that design process. Sure. Well, we have a wonderful designer and she has a lot of inspiration from just seeing what people are wearing in different areas of the world. We sell to mostly America, but, um, you know, people are adventuring everywhere. Um, and so we look at a, diff a lot of different places where people are wearing our products. And a great source for her of inspiration is going to photo shoots and going to ranches and working with people and hearing what, what they like about our products and what's working for them and what they'd like to see more of. So we really try and connect with our end consumer a lot before we start our planning process of how we want to um, launch our new collection. And even though you have so many different products, um, one of the biggest things we're talking about here, and you and Mike have already touched on it, is the oil skin. And I'm looking at the oil skin collection under your women's link on the website and just, again, really neat products. You have the traditional duster, but then you also have really, really nice looking jackets and vests. And it's not just like the traditional duster you think of when you think of oil skin. You know, these are very modernized products that you have um, in the outerwear. 
Yeah, we recently came out with the Matilda Duster, which is our first duster for women. And we had a lot of ladies saying, you know, I love dusters. I've been wearing my dad's forever. And I just want something that fits a little bit better. So the Matilda just came out and we're really, you know, we just try and listen to our customers and provide what they're looking for. And again, I'm just going through the links on the website. And for anyone listening, it's outbacktrading.com. We have to mention you you have accessories too, socks, hat bands, dog coats, which oh, yes. is always, always fun. But um, besides all that, I do want to go back to talking about authenticity. And you use that in your booth design. And I've been told very attractive for your buyers. And you do a lot of design extras. I won't spoil those ideas. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you share what you do because I it sounds very neat. Yeah, we like to, this year at WESA, we had a lot of fun with the two end caps. We did fall side and then a winter side. And we showed a lot of the different styles. Uh, our fall collection has a ton of really vibrant colors. So we used a lot of leaves and tree branches and really tried to show the two seasons on either side of our booth, which was fun. It got people talking. And in years past, we've used waterfalls to show how oil skin works. And we really just like to to show what the products are doing outside of the booth to give people yeah. an idea. Right. And that would be part of your product demonstrations, right? Sure. And you, you, you're teaching the buyers more about your products and obvious for obvious reasons why that would come in in extreme handy in selling your products, but how much do your buyers love that? I think our buyers, you know, they need to really, they need to connect with the pieces. It's hard to sell an oil skin duster, it's, you know, a black jacket or a brown jacket. It doesn't have a lot of hanger appeal. So you really need to understand the jacket and the different features. And that's why West is great getting to sit down with our buyers and talk them through, you know, some styles that they may have carried for a few years, but didn't know all the different features. And really just to be hands-on, especially with oil skin, because it is a different fabric. And a lot of people, I think, get scared when they hear the name, Uh thinking that it's going to be something really oily and get oil in their cars and furniture. And as soon as you do feel it, you know that that's not the case. So it's really great being able to connect with our buyers for that reason. Sure. And I, I just want to talk about one more product before I throw it back to Mike. Hats. Hats have become not just a a necessity. They've also become a huge fashion piece within our Western industry in the recent years. And hats is a, are another product that you sell. Are yeah. any of those with that same oil skin process or just tell us sure, a little bit about yeah. your hat line? So we have uh, a few different lines in our hat collection. We do have the oil skin line, which is a few different colors of oil skin in our hat and a whole range from Western looks to more of outdoor hiking or the more countryside look. And then we have uh, Canyon Land, which is another one of our great fabrics, which looks like a vintage oil skin, but is actually soft. Um, And we have that in jackets and our hats. And then we have a wool collection of hats. So some more brighter colors and feathers um, and then caps and our straws as well. So yep, hats for any day of the week. (laughs) I love it. Well, and, and (laughs) To use as well, you know, to use to stay out of weather elements, but really look fashionable while doing it because that, that, like I mentioned, that is a big part of our Western fashion industry right now. So functional and fashionable and and you really can't beat that combination. No, there's, yeah, so many great hats in our industry right now. It's a really fun time for, I think, with the different colors and styles that are out there right now. One of the interesting things that Allie and I were talking about earlier, because the reality is Anybody who's marketing anything to retailers and through retailers to consumers uh, has started to adjust to the current realities of the world with COVID-19. And one of the things we were discussing was Allie's awareness that her retailers and the people that, that sell their clothes are located in smaller communities like here in Pueblo, Colorado, where we mm-hmm. have fortunately a light amount of COVID to areas that are still uh, pretty much under lockdown. It's been very, uh, it's very heavy. And it's really her job as marketing director and her rep's job to feed back to her what the marketing scenario is in those markets. And I'd like to hear to chat a bit about that. And that, that led to a conversation of Zoom marketing, which is something that may not have been done by a lot of people, including me, <laughs> six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. And they've yep. got a Zoom studio. 
But let's talk a bit about the variety of market conditions that you're dealing with and all retailers are dealing with, and then talk about how you're using this technology to your advantage and theirs. Sure. So one really big thing in our industry is the relationships. You know, the Western industry is a smaller industry. We all know, have people, friends in common, and our reps are quite close with a lot of their different accounts, and they've worked with these different accounts for years and years. And as we are selling all across America, and there are so many different pockets of sensitivity with where COVID is a bit heavier or weaker, so it's really a great time, well, not a great time, but it's a really important time for our reps to be reaching out to accounts and checking in with them, um, you know, just being aware of what's happening in different areas because they are on the ground. And it, it's a time that those relationships are really highlighted and shown. And another part of this time is that we're aware that customers might not want to see us. They might not want to see our new collections in person. And that's completely fine. So our response to that has been to set up a Zoom studio so we can have face-to-face meetings with customers, with our reps, and get as personal as we can without actually being there face-to-face. I think it's, it's really important when you're showing a collection to, to see the different fabrics and feel the different, see the different features. But in our current situation right now, that's not the case. So we're turning to Zoom and we're excited that we have this technology and we're able to still connect with everyone and see people face to face. Well, I I think you're very smart to have adopted that technology, Uh, you know, where we'll be six months from now in terms of marketing avenues at your disposal, no one knows. But I think it's very impressive that you are cognizant of it and being proactive in terms of marketing things. Anyway, I I think we've had a great conversation. I'm glad that you are part of WISA. As you mentioned, we are the Wisdom by WISA podcast. So no surprise, we mention it now and then. But. (laughs) Anyway, it's great to talk to you. By the way, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, by the way, Alexander came from the event planning world, and I happen to know something about that. My wife was an event planner, and when you come from that world, you are always ready to react to market conditions and situations instantaneously. Clearly, with working with her reps on their markets, adding a Zoom studio, that part of the marketing of the company is going to be going along fine while the designer is coming up with great clothes and great ideas and the quality of the company. Company, uh, is clearly there. So, Allie, I do appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk about Outback Trading with us, and yeah, I'm sure you. we'll all see you down the line. Yes, I look forward to seeing you in uh, Dallas, hopefully in the not-too-distant future. We all hope so. All right. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Show notes and links from today's show can be found at wisdombywisa.com. And, of course, we'd like to hear your feedback if you have some. There's a contact link on that site. The Wisdom by Wisa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and it's super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wisa podcast. Wisa, where the industry meets. 